Good day, beloved. God bless you and keep you. Today, I want to talk to us about Old Rugged Cross. Old Rugged Cross. Do not forget, wisdom is a principal thing. Get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. And that's why we are here today again. I want to read from to us from the book of Luke chapter 18, from verse 2 down to 8. A certain judge was in a certain city, not fearing God, nor respecting man. And the widow was in that city, and she came to him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not do so for a time. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard man, Yet, because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her that she will not wear me down in the end. Let me stop a little while. This judge does not fear God, does not fear man. If this judge fear man, we, we, we will have to call one or two people to help us, man, I mean, beg him to change his mind. If the judge fear God, we will, we will all pray to God. He doesn't fear God, doesn't fear man. So whatever he says, that is it. What a dangerous judge. And here comes a widow, the lowest social status. No husband, not back in the day anyways. So there was nobody to plead the cause of this widow. To this judge who does not fear God, so the case was hopeless. Yet... The widow had the weapon, consistency, or persistency, or being stubborn in the spirit. Give it any English you want. This woman too will, 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 receive no, will not receive no financer. You must judge me. In the social club, the woman is there. In the bathroom, the, man, the woman's image is, is on the judge's mind. In his dining, at the point, even in his sleep, he's dreaming of this woman saying, "Avenge me! Avenge me!" And out of one, one, they say, hey, this one will wear me out. You know what? Let me just attend to let, let her carry her bala and let her go. Let me just avenge for her. So I can have time for my life or, or else I'm in trouble. I can't even think straight again. The woman continued. You will avenge. I am not, I'm not addressing you by what you want. I'm addressing you by what I want to receive. So I'm not going to keep quiet until I get what I want. Judge! Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 5. Verse 6, pardon me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge say. Stop. Did the woman get her request met? Yes. Did the judge have his way? No. People, people will have said, eh, That judge, whatever he says, finish. So we we'll just manage it. But do my neighbor, not me. It may be you. But not me. This judge will do his needful in avenging me of my adversaries. I will so much make noise. I will so much insist. And she did. And the judge said to him, though I don't fear, he even knew himself, I don't fear God, I don't fear man. But this woman will wear me out. Hear what the unjust judge said. And in verse 7, Christ says, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry to him day and night? To him. He said, though he, is, he, he has been long suffering over them, I say to you that he will avenge them and he will do it speedily. Now, if the unjust judge say, hey, Okay, let me just deal with your situation. How much more God who loves you, his name is called Ever Ready Present Help. The wisdom in this story is in verse 1. He told them in the parable that men ought always to pray and not faint. When they say pray always, not all the hours of the all, not the 20, 24 hours, you will live an unproductive life. But persist in prayer, any opportunity that you are, you are free, chip in one or two minutes of prayer. In the bathroom, in the toilet, in the kitchen, chip it in. If you are less, less busy at work, chip it in. Keep, seek God's face with your character, with your body, to your subordinate, to your, to your junior people. 
with the dressing, with your speech. Seek God's faith with everything. In diligence, in dissipating your character. In, in, in help people with your talent. Seek the face of God. That was what the woman did. This is the ancient, registered, correct way of moving the hand of God. The love of God, this generation, we are too distracted. Let me use, use one of my teachers' English. We are too arrogant. You pray for how many minutes? You are tired already. You are, you are looking for water. You prayed for how many months? Go and ask Father Abraham. He had God. He followed God. 25 years. I'm not saying yours is going to be like that. But this man, this man persisted. I believe this God. I am fully persuaded he will do it. If he's not doing it, it's because in his infinite wisdom, it's not right. My child wants me to buy him a car. It's just 13 years. I won't say because I love him so much, buy him a car. I will kill him. I will wait until he's, he's lawfully allowed to drive. Then I take him to a driving school. He passed his test. We test him several times with some other cars. Then I get him a driver's license. Then you are free to drive. I won't just say because I love him and you drop you go and get a jeep at the, mam at the market. I will kill him. The same thing with your heavenly father. The whole rugged cross is the way, not the Polish one that you are following around now. You 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 call God for one hour. God, God is not answering. Let me go to that pastor. He has a miracle. He can help me. Just forget it. How about God pressing the faith, his quality faith out through you? We are in a generation where we don't want to put up with sound doctrine again. The Bible says it this way. Proverbs 20, 28. Do not remove the landmark which your fathers have set. Our, our fathers of old, most of them didn't even go to school. From where I come from, they don't go to school. They were illiterate. They don't know the scriptures as much as we know now. They only have one rocky, rickety road Bible like that and they read over and over. They just read, read in that Bible that if you believe, you will do more than what Christ do. So what did what they Christ do? He will go today. So Mitchell, let me go and we go today. And they, they just roar like that. And the hand of Lord that they moved in their time was tremendous. Now, the wisdom is so much now compared to, the, to the, those days. Whose hand are we moving? Some man prayed. He prayed that his feet were sinking on a rock. He was praying and his feet sank on a rock. And you only pray for 10 minutes. You are sweating. You have you having leg cramps. Somebody prayed and was literally I was physically levitating. Physically. Power. Display of power. Display of grace. God was not ashamed to be identified with them. And those are the people that you call illiterate, you know, back in their days, you know, it was a, it was a caveman day, and give me all the English that, that you say. But they moved the hand of God so much. A man saw a dead, a dead person with a dead fly, a, de a dead man and a dead fly. And he said, ah, if Christ woke up before the old day, this will, this will, will, will wake up. Physically, everybody was there. And he prayed. It was the fly that woke up first. The fly came back alive first before the human became came alive. Somebody prayed before the Lord, and a dead clock for years started walking by, by itself. There are countless miracles and signs that, 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 that spread all around. I heard of a missionary who went to a place and a snake beat. A person and he went to the bush looking for the snake. He couldn't find and he, he said, Today, no but no snake was and that island was said that there's no more snake till today. Where did the snake go? Who how did he hear what the man of God says? 
there is a way that our fathers had paid for us. We are saying we are we are too, we are getting sophisticated. Those part are you know paid by the by the by, by those illiterate papa back back in the day. I went to school now. I got PhD. Says hell with your PhD. How many fingers of God have you moved? Take Jeremiah chapter six verse sixteen. It says stand on the road and ask for the ancient path, the good and the old way. Walk in it. This is the way Christ at work. The apostles at work. Our fathers of old as work. They didn't know seven candles of heaven. They didn't know Greek and Hebrew and uh, and 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 versions. This is the word of God. Let me ask you: Which Bible did apostle those apostles read? And we are reading them. What did they do? Right. What didn't they do right? Why are we not moving the hand of God the way they did back in the day? Because we have taken sandpaper and wooden filer. What do you call it? Now, pardon me if I'm, if I'm pronouncing them, them wrong. Those things that they used to smoothing the surface of the wood. That being laziness, that being ignorance, that being watering down the standard of the Bible, that being meaning compromising, deceit, backbiting. These things were available back in the day. But because of the presence of this man, they moved foundations that those things was almost becoming obsolete. But now, with our laziness, with our complacency, with our seek for pleasure rather than seeking the things of God. Pleasure first. If I must go to a church, it must be a church with AC, leather seats, no screen, state of the art, the audio and visual system, you know. Are you going to an hotel or going to a church? That being found in a church is not a crime. Believe me. But if you are looking for such before you hear the word, then there's a trouble. I want to sit down in a place where, where, where I'm comfortable too, because the more comfortable I am, the more likely I hear and I understand. I, 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 I get your point. But if that is your criterion of choosing church, the first place I'm opportune to pastor is in somebody's veranda with nine chairs. Nine. What? Nine chairs. One megaphone for four years. It was so such a funny time that even my senior pastor would not want to come and greet us. We continued faithfully. We continued faithfully. Today, to God be the glory. You know, we we will contribute. We will take offering, and we will give the offering to people that that needed travel back back home. We are that poor, but Jesus is still Lord. So don't blame such a people when the Lord is raising them up, right, left, and center. The way to the Father is the old rugged cross, not the polished cross that is now so popular and is growing faster. Don't forget your master, my master, says in the last day the love of many will be worse cold. Among the signs he told us was that people will gather around themselves, teachers, that will teach them what their itching ear wants to hear. I said it, I'm saying, I'm saying, repeating it. There are three basic things that you must observe in the message or the ministrations of any gathering that said they are focusing on Christ. The message, either in choir ministration, in the prayer time, in the sermon time, their services. There must be an instruction to you. There must be a correction on your way. There must be a rebuke. It is rebuke, correct, and instruct. If you don't have all these three, at least two or the three of this one, uh, we need prayer. We need prayer. If you are angry that the pastor, who did, who did even know you or have any idea of what you have done wrong, is speaking something on the altar and it's affecting you, is rebuking you, is correcting you and giving you instruction to change. Praise God. The old drugged cross is the way where our fathers and mothers will sit down 
And the, where was it not their prayer that made us today? Our parents produce us with their suffering and their illiteracy. Give me anything you want to say. They, they didn't go to school. They, they were laborers and they were washermen and everything. They produced doctors, lawyers, engineers. Now, you engineer, doctor, and lawyer, what are you producing? Fraudsters, lazy bones, here and there, defective child or children. Look at the, the rate of moral decadence you find on the streets today. The way to peace is still the old rugged cross. You don't change the ancient path. Your fathers as marked. You don't adjust it. That is the will of God. How about Peter, Paul, and James back in the day? Do they have saxophone and drum sets and sophisticated speakers in their, in their church? Like I'm saying it again. Having them in church is not bad. But when you make that your priority, then there is trouble. Is this not what killed the efficient church? Go and check your Bible. It was they were commended initially. Now, at the book of Revelation, you have forgotten your first love. It become a mon it become a monument instead of a movement. Because they polished the cross. It's too, it's too spiky. Let us make it soft and succulent. It's even too, let, let, let us cut it a, a little bit. It's too heavy. It says anyone that wants to be my disciples will first of all carry his cross and follow me. The old way is this. It is not a bad idea to add wisdom to it. In fact, it, we expect you to get better by the day. But when you erode the very method that make those men of old giants salvation, holiness, repentance, prayers, fasting, talk about heaven, give us some one or two things we can do to avoid hell. These teachings, how many people are putting this on the, on the altar today? What do you hear? 50 ways to become relevant. That is not bad. You are teaching people to be relevant and they don't know holiness, holiness and salvation. You are teaching them to be fruitful. They don't, they don't know what, 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 what integrity, what, what value is. What do you expect them to become? When they become that successful, no character, no dedication, no holiness, no righteousness. Beloved, the old drugged cross is still the way. Get wisdom in all you're getting. Get understanding. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name.